Hello, everyone, and may the fourth, fourth be, be with, with you. you. I'm Mike. I'm Jessica. And we are Prestige Worldwide Comics. Welcome back to a special edition in celebration of Star Wars Day. So today uh, we are going to focus all the way on Star Wars. We were actually lucky enough this weekend to get a Star Wars collection. So we thought, what better way to celebrate May 4th than to show you guys a little bit of what we got. Yeah, it was re actually really coincidental and pretty exciting. Uh, we got contacted by someone who had a large collection of Star Wars memorabilia, including the comic books. Um, what was most exciting about this collection is the plethora of Dark Horse comics. Um, Dark Horse, as many know, got the rights from Marvel in the early 90s to produce Lucasfilm's Star Wars line of comic books. And so because Dark Horse was a small indie company, the print runs on these are very small. Uh, much smaller than you would think, even though with a name like Star Wars, you'd think a lot more people would be buying. But being comic book shops and indie publishers, you really only order just enough to make sure your fan base bought everything. And maybe have one or two issues on the shelf for casual readers. Otherwise, you might overextend yourself financially, and that's bad news. So we got a whole collection of these Dark Horse comic books in, low print run. And even though Disney, when they got the rights from Lucasfilm um, to, to own, you know, Star Wars, they said that this stuff wasn't going to be canon. But because the people that work for Disney also grew up reading these comic books, reading the books, a lot of the lore that's from these books or these comics still find a way to, into the films into the animated series and into the Disney Plus TV shows. So lots of cool stuff. So we're gonna show you some of the cool books that came in, and then we're also gonna talk about some of the cool stuff that's going on for the 4th of May, Star Wars Day. Why don't you start us off? All right. So this is a cool little cover. Um, so this is the first appearance of Jareel, um, a powerful force wielder. So yeah, this is from the Knights of the Old Republic storyline. Jareel was one of the main characters. Um, not quite a Jedi, but uh, had Jedi training, could wield the Force, and actually one of the main uh, antagonists of the show, or of the series. So really cool first appearance. Once again, low print run. We also got in Tag and Bank is Dead, number one and two. Now, Tag and Bink are a niche character, though the two-part miniseries was meant to be a comedy about all the crazy things that happen in Star Wars happened because of these two rebel fighters that have disguised themselves as stormtroopers on the Death Star with Vader. Um, this is actually one of the lowest print runs of all the Dark Horse comics. There's estimated to be about between 6,000 and 9,000 copies ever ordered Marvel recently re-released all four issues because they had a two-part series was the first one and they did a second one that was a two-part series and they did it in a trade paperback form. So because of the characters being cool little characters, it's a parody and such a low print run, uh, it's a very sought after um, set. So that's a really cool set that we got in. Well, the second comic looks like that. All right, the next one is the first appearance of Darth Tyrannus. So if you liked The Clone Wars, the actual film, they mentioned Darth Tyrannus in there. Um, it was a Sith? Not exactly sure. I need to go through and actually read this comic. But I know that it's the you first... You know definitely more than I would. Yeah, it's definitely the first appearance of Darth Tyrannus. Uh, these Django Fetch books are really cool. Uh, there's a lot of lore behind it. Personally, I'd like to do a little more research, but that's a cool book that came in. Another 
cool book we have Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi episode one this is the first non movie adaptation appearance of Darth Maul so Darth Maul has kind of a weird first appearance situation in the dark in the Dark Horse universe and comics they released this comic book the same day as they released the movie adaptation comic book so they have the Darth Maul movie adaptation, where you get to see Darth Maul obviously in that, and then you have this story where Darth Maul makes an appearance. So, kind of like two first appearances, in a way I would I would compare it similar to Amazing Spider-Man 252, along with uh, Sensational Spider-Man 94 with the black suit. How like they all came out the same day, nobody really knows his true first, but everybody wants to collect the different appearances. Yeah. All right, so I think this one is actually a really cool cover. Um, this is the first appearance of Darth Bane. Um, this cover is actually, I like it. It's very vibrant. Just a lot going on with it. Um, Michael can tell you a little bit more about. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know a lot about this storyline. I know that Darth Bane uh, has made a lot of appearances in the Tales of the Jedi storylines. So this was probably a really good read. Uh, I definitely would plan on going through and reading the rest of them. Uh, we just haven't had time to get around to it yet. Time flies. When you're having fun. <laughs> All right. So the next one we've got is Bounty Hunters One Shot Aurora Singh. Now this is the first appearance of Aurora Singh. Aurora Singh is a pretty cool little... Uh, Backstory, she was a Jedi Padawan who was kidnapped by the Huts, and then later was used to become an assassin for the Huts. I know she made her first, uh, she, she appeared in Clone Wars, she appeared in uh, The Phantom Menace, I believe. You see her briefly out of the screen, but she did have a pretty big role in the Clone Wars, and even at one point in Rebels, I believe, so... Uh, she's actually a big part of the current Star Wars lore. It's so, definitely one that I will be picking up and taking a look at and yeah, reading very, a little bit Very cool too. character. Yeah. Alright, so this is the first Darth Talon cover only. So Darth Talon was one of the main um, villains in the Star Wars Legacy series it's a great series um it takes place in the future of the star wars lore way after what's happened in the movies so far and uh, darth talon as you can see right there on the cover uh, she's one of the main or antagonists and uh her this is her first appearance but it's a cover appearance only you don't actually get to see her in the books till later on So we have Star Wars Jango Fett. This is the first appearance of Jango Fett in comics. Everybody knows who he is. He was probably the coolest part of Clone Wars. Uh, you've got a lot of good backstory and history with Jango Fett. Obviously, he's the father of Boba Fett, who is everybody's favorite bounty hunter. Well, now it's the Mandalorian. But before the Mandalorian, he was everybody's favorite bounty hunter. So, uh, yeah, this is his first appearance. All right. So this is the first appearance of Cade Skywalker and the first of Darth Krait. I don't, I don't really know much about this one at all. Yeah. So once again, this is another one of the Legacy books. Uh, Legacy was a really, really cool storyline. Once again, like I said, it takes place in the future. Cade Skywalker is a descendant of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade. So. Uh, He's got the whole the whole thing. He kind of struggles with the fact that he's expected to live up to a certain way because he is a Skywalker. Yeah, and uh, it makes a lot of it makes for good reading because you have an internal struggle between the light and the dark and how people expect him to act and how he's actually acting, along with you know your typical Sith villains. So it's a good Star Wars read. Uh, one of the best uh, modern comics I would say as far as Star Wars go before they switched over to Marvel again. Here we have Star Wars Tales number seven. Now this is uh, one of two covers. They released a photo cover, which is this variant, and then there's a regular cover. 
Uh, this is the first appearance of Aelin Vell, which is Boba Fett's daughter. It's also the first appearance of Sintas Vell, which is Boba Fett's uh, love interest and uh, Aelin Vell's mother. So, cool little first appearance there. Anything with Boba Fett lore is always good. All right, so this is the first appearance of Black Sun Crime Syndicate, the first appearance of Dash Rengar, and the first appearance of Prince Zizor. So this is a really cool book. Um, up until recently, it wasn't really considered a very valuable book. Um, many of you guys who grew up in the early 2000s would remember the, uh, st the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire mm -hmm. video game for the N64 where you play as Dash Rengar and you're trying to avoid Boba Fett, IG-88, save Han, and it takes place between Empire and Jedi. The cool thing about this is with the last Disney movie, Solo, uh, they gave validation to the Black Sun Crime Syndicate. And that's who Woody Harrelson and Han Solo's character worked for and were trying to steal all that mer minerals for. And so by bringing that syndicate into the main Star Wars lore, it opens us up for a lot of cool backstories, including Prince Zizor and possibly Dash Rengar making a, an appearance. So this is actually a pretty hot book right now because of that. Now, right here we have one of the, the rare diamonds in the rough. Uh, this is Star Wars Jedi Mace Windu One-Shot. Another one of those books that has a ridiculously low print run. And the reason this book is important is because this is the first appearance of Ventress Asajj, the Sith apprentice of Count Dooku. Now, we didn't see any of her in the movies, but the Clone Wars TV animated show has... Uh, focused heavily on her and with this last season of Clone Wars being the final season we're hoping we're going to see more of her she's made appearances in video games and she is a fan favorite because of the low print run this book is got a because of the hefty price tag so it's a it's a nice book to find in a, in a nice little comic lot yes all right so my Last one is the first appearance of General Thrawn and the first appearance of Mara Jade. So Thrawn, as everyone knows, has made his way back into the Marvel Universe. There's been comics for the Marvel Universe based off of Thrawn. Uh, this was a, a number one bestseller written by Timothy Zahn. It was then later adapted to comic books. Uh, Mara Jade, as many people know, the lore behind her is being Luke Skywalker's wife and having children that go on to further the Jedi Order. Given the, the events of the latest film, uh, we doubt that we'll be seeing Mara Jade in the, that form. But we do know that Thrawn is most likely coming to the silver screen one way or another. So this book is actually really hot. Um... Recently, with the announcements of Disney Plus's new stuff, uh, this is up, I think, 45% from last month. So it's it's climbing steadily. It's a good book to have. Once again, another low print run, print run book. So if you can find a copy, I highly suggest getting it. And then we have Knights of the Old Republic number nine. Now, this is the first appearance of Darth Raven. Now... A lot of people are familiar with the video game Knights of the Old Republic. It was a huge smash hit. It was a immersed RPG. Uh, since then, it is uh, Darth Raven has been brought into uh, the Star Wars lore. You see Marvel has created the Star Wars Black series, and they're creating Darth Raven figures, statues. So there's no question that Darth, Darth Raven is in the, uh, the Marvel wheelhouse for the future uh when or when or how they're going to use darth raven is another another story altogether but uh this the backstory of this darth raven or how they introduced darth raven is pretty awesome it was a sith lore lord that uh 
basically the Jedi brainwashed into thinking he's a Jedi so he could fight the Sith. And so you got a, a, a good guy who's a bad guy. So it's a real kind of a tortured soul story. It's very cool. Um, the Knights of the Old Republic is probably my favorite Dark Horse storyline. Not to mention, it's a great game. And if you have time, I highly suggest you do it. And then, of course, no Star Wars collection is complete without Star Wars number 42. This is from the original series, the Marvel series. This is the first appearance of Boba Fett. The first appearance of the Emperor, because you, you get to see him in hologram form. And then it's also the first appearance of Yoda. So you got a three for one in this book. It's climbed exponentially since the release of the Mandalorian TV show. Because obviously this is the first time you see the Mandalorian armor. Or anything that resembles the Mandalorian. And so people love this book. It's been a hot book for as long as I can remember. But right now it's even hotter. So these are just a few of the awesome books that came in our collection that we picked up. Uh, why don't you tell us in the comments what you guys are reading that is Star Wars related. If it's new, if it's old, is it book, is it comic, are you watching anything, YouTube, uh, let us know, okay? Alright, so Star Wars Day wouldn't be complete without maybe a little bit of news on the Star Wars world. So... Leading off from where he was just saying, so Mandalorian. Obviously, a Mandalorian was a smash hit around probably the entire world. Um, I know we didn't even, I don't know, like, we didn't even binge watch it. Like, it was, like, every night that it came out. Like, us, the kids, we were on the couch with our popcorn watching the show. Um, we got his parents into it. Like... It was, it's definitely become a family affair for us. So, um, a little bit of news. I know, you know, with the virus and everything going on, a lot of stuff has been pushed back. But thankfully, um, season two of The Mandalorian will come out this fall. Um, it hasn't, they haven't given an exact date of when it will be, but they did say that it will be out in the fall. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, everything starts to open up a little bit faster and, you know, everybody stays safe and, you know, we can get life going and get Star Wars going. Definitely. We also know that Obi-Wan, his uh, Disney Plus story will be coming out later in December as well. Hopefully that there's been no more delays with that. Um, another big piece of news that came out was uh, a few weeks back, Rosario Dawson was announced to play Osaka Tano as uh, on a Disney Plus TV series. Now they haven't really said what the role was going to be as far as if it was going to focus solely on her or if she would be making appearances in things like Obi-Wan or The Mandalorian. Uh, regardless, that comic book itself has uh, spiked tremendously. Yes, definitely. Uh, we don't have a copy to show you, but it is The Clone Wars number one. There's two covers. Both covers are in the hundreds of dollars right now. Because combined with a low print run, it's a very hot character that people love. Uh, Osaka is a... She's not a Jedi. She was Force trained. She was Anakin's apprentice. But as you know, if you're watching The Clone Wars, she left the Jedi Order because she didn't like what they stood for anymore. She felt like that they were, they were not what they were supposed to be. So she is the only person in the Star Wars universe that is not a Jedi and not a Sith. But she is a powerful force wielder. So that is a uh, cool series. So we'll see what they do with her. Um, another big one they, they said is uh, they were talking about making a Solo 2 movie. Now, where, the, where they go with it is another question. I've heard mixed reviews. I personally enjoyed the Solo movie. It, it's tough when you don't have Harrison Ford and you don't have Billy Dee Williams. Yeah, it's... It, it's different, but it, it was still a fun movie. If you go in there with the expectations that it's going to be the same as... Or that same feel as the original, I'm of course you're going to be disappointed. But I still enjoyed the movie. I think you kind of got to go into the newer movies, you know, with an open mind. And, 
you know, kind of see what, you know, they have to offer. And obviously, you know, Star Wars has been a big money maker, you know, for years and years and years. So, you know, I think it would kind of be stupid to stop it, but at the same time, you don't want it to be like one of those things that it just goes on and on and loses its... I feel like with as much money as Disney paid to acquire the rights to Star Wars and the fact that they just opened up Star Wars land right before all this happened, that uh, we're not going to see the end of anything Star Wars anytime soon. I know our kids are okay with that. Yes. <laughs> Um, the other thing, being at Star Wars Day, if you uh, want to do anything interactive, since we can't go out and celebrate because of the virus, uh, Reed Pop, the organize, organizers of Emerald City Comic Con, New York City Comic Con, and various other conventions are doing an online Star Wars Day. Actually, it's days. It's the 4th and 5th. Um, May the 4th be with you and Revenge of the 5th. And so what they're doing, some of the stuff they're doing are live tweeting the, the original films. They're having cast and crew interviews, Q&As, um, all kinds of stuff. So if you go over to their Twitter and follow them, you can find out more information on what's what and where to watch that. So that's a cool way to celebrate the 4th and 5th while you're cooped up indoors. Thanks to COVID. Yay! <laughs> I think that's all that we have. Yep, Anything that's, else? That's everything from us today. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of Star Wars Day. Everybody be safe. Have a great rest of your weekend. And Yeah, put some likes, put some comments, give us a subscribe, and tell us what you think. Yeah, right. that's it. Have a good night. Bye, everyone. Bye.